Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Yeah, yeah. I hear I'm chatting to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear I'm chatting with the boys. Shot with the prize, white girls let it tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hot like fire on the pine. If you wanna touch my please use caution. Cold like zero degrees. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the peace. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the let out the let out the let out the, the sheets. We can't get one man, forget my peace. We take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put him in a cage, never let out the let out the let out the. Yeah. I hear him chatting the noise, move too quick, can't stop for the talking. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Roy, you do not make the Florida Panthers underdogs against anybody. Yeah. Anywhere, anybody. Uh, they go into Dallas last night, three goals uh, in the uh, last period, third period, in order to come back. Uh, ridiculous. But the oddball crew has flown in, and I'm pretty sure the reason the oddball crew flew in <laughs> is just because they know that the jet story that Stugatz had so much dream and expectation for ends with their quarterback retiring to run for a failed vice presidential bid. And <laughs> Whoa, with Ty, failed? With Ty, failed. With Ty, Wait a second. With Tyrod. Let the people decide, man. With, with Tyrod Taylor as his starting quarterback. I'm pretty sure that's why Charlotte and Amin flew in today. Yeah, we just wanted to be here for moral support yeah. for Stu. Thank you. Anytime. Yep. The Jets should get a compensatory second-round pick for this, right? I mean... They should get something. Right. They should get – is it a second-round pick? Or From should, who, Congress? Should, 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 I don't know. Should, should, Anybody. No, the league, look. The, the Packers league, have my second-round pick. The, the league should just – because they're like, you know what, Aaron, thank you. We had all that problem with Colin Kaepernick and the flag. Now we've got an active player sort of on the other side of all of this, possibly as a vice presidential <laughs> candidate. Well, he'd be independent, so he'd be right down the middle, Dan. Right. You don't know where Aaron Rodgers' politics are, Stop I think it's fair him. to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Aaron Rodgers, it's not so much that Aaron Rodgers believes in stuff, it's that he doesn't believe in stuff. His whole platform is like, here are the things that I don't believe in. And RFK Jr. is like, ha my man. <laughs> Welcome. Skeptical. Didn't he just do this whole thing with Jimmy Kimmel, though, and Jeffrey Epstein? And didn't RFK say he flew on Jeffrey Epstein's plane Well, let's, let's get that sound uh, real quick here, because I do want to think for a moment about what that cabinet looks like. Because you know, you know, Randall Cobb's on it, and so is Bakhtiari. Yes, I mean. uh, yes, Lazard, Lazard is on it. We might have who else? What? Which one of the Packard tight ends is going to be Hackett on it? Jordy is Nelson, chief of staff for sure. Uh, here, this was this was unusual. The last time I heard from Robert Kennedy, I do not know what the context for this could possibly have been, but they asked him evidently about. Uh, about being friends with Epstein, and he's like, I'll do you one better than that. I was always entertaining rapists. Yeah. So, and I you run into everybody in New York. I mean, I knew Harvey Weinstein. I knew Roger Ailes. I knew O.J. Simpson came to my house. On yeah. the, Bill Cosby came to my house. An odd flex. It's funny. <laughs> and not in any way. Shout out to Andrew Schultz. That's a good get right there. RFK? Wow. Yeah. Is it? RFK Jr.? Isn't have we, it? Have we had him? Well, Pablo uh, declined him. He Did was offered him and declined really? him. Really? I don't think it's hard to get a guy running for president on your show. I feel like it's the opposite. They're trying to be everywhere. We've never had a presidential candidate on our show. We had a president, but he wasn't. we didn't know he was going to be a candidate at the time. Charlotte, uh, are you're, you're staring open-mouthed at Amin. Do you want to do that oddball with RFK? Is that something you want to do? The disgraced Abs Kennedy brother? Absolutely not. I'm just, like, still shocked by that clip. Yeah. He's literally like, oh, yeah, you want to hear some bad guys? I'll tell you about some bad guys. Oh, you guys. hadn't seen that? No. You, had, you had not heard? That's the last time I heard from him. It was last week. It was going everywhere because it's, like, it's fairly amazing judgment to go that route on that question. Now, I don't want to recklessly speculate here, but does that mean Recklessly speculate? Yeah, exactly. It's a tough one, yeah. Does that mean that RFK Jr. is a Celtics fan? Given where the Kennedys are from? Sure. 
Oh. Okay, well, let's not. So that's an add up now. This is, that's neither here nor there. I mean, why so. are you whispering as if you think that's the better way to do this? <laughs> that's the worst thing about him to a mean. Like, Me? <laughs> we have to accuse him of this in silence. I'm whispering? He's Seems, like, this might it's be. It's called so, sotto voce. You should learn it sometimes. You got to mix it up. Sometimes you're loud and sometimes you're soft. Mm. Amin and it gets the point across. Amin was worried that that was character defamation and he was going to get sued, so he had to say it quietly. Yeah. Thank you for teaching me how to do this. I mean, I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. The other story today that everyone is talking about. There's another story? There is another story uh, than the idea that we might have an active NFL player running for vice president. Why do they do this? Like, someone, I think, asked that if he wants to go into politics. He's like, oh, you, know, you never know. And, like, The Rock keeps for Like, why do celebrities think they want to be president of the United States? It seems like such a hassle. I know, but one was. Exactly. I mean. That's why. Yeah, but like, how's that working out? Well, pretty good. It's about to get reelected. I mean. <laughs> it goes $400 million. Not in jail. You know what I want to do if I have $500 million? Not owe $400 million. <laughs> or just never be seen again. Or heard from. Exactly right. Like, like, do they just need, like, the ego needs, they need everyone thinking about them and talking about them constantly, that they need to be in politics? Why? Also, something, sorry, Dan, I know you're trying to move on from Aaron Rodgers, but I have one more thing. Th say this went well for RFK and Aaron Rodgers. What if the Jets also have a deep playoff run right. and the game conflicts with the inauguration? What does Rodgers do? Mm -hmm. What do you think he does? Luckily, they don't have to worry about that because mm -hmm. they're still the From Jets. your lips. <laughs> a deep playoff run? Well, either, really. <laughs> I have him taking the oath right there at the 50-yard line. What's more likely, though, Jets AFC Championship game conflict with the inauguration or RFK Jr. elected? If uh, if sports RFK are, Jr. If sports are indeed a mirror for society, I do believe that the open to the Jets season would sort of mirror what that presidential campaign would do, where they have the flag, they wave it at the beginning, and then four <laughs> plays later, everything is shit. <laughs> Everything is just total shit, but we wave the flag for those few moments. And what we win, we're against vaccines. That's our platform. <laughs> they also, if the, if this happens, they did register KennedyRogers.com. And wow. if, if this happens, guarantee you the picture of Aaron Rodgers carrying the flag out onto the yeah. field oh. is the yeah. header of yeah. the website. No. <laughs> it, I mean, it's a great picture. We can't, I mean, that is the, the one what thing happened. he did. That the is highlight the of one my thing season. We, we yeah. can't dispute that. That is the highest the Jets have ever been. <laughs> It was a great 15 seconds. Not since I mean. Namath. Not since Joe Namath in 1969 <laughs> had the guy. Jets felt as good as they did the moment Aaron Rodgers in a stadium filled with oh. flashing lights brought hope expectations to the Jets for four plays. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stu. I hate them. Uh, also yesterday, though, a lot of people, I'd, I'd like to know, I'd really like to know from the group, I don't know how much Sabin coverage you guys consumed yesterday, but if anyone ended up on the other side of this, because I believe Nick Saban making as much money as he did in that sport and then coming out against the idea of the sport can't be about money the moment I lose control of the money and everyone can get the money. But when Nick Saban says what I'm about to play here, I want to ask you guys if you heard anyone supporting Nick Saban, any media members, when I think about the disconnect about what college fans might want in terms of freedom in this realm, whether they'd want Nick Saban in charge, and if the media just goes the other way, which I'm going to go as well, where I just point out the hypocrisy again and again of how much money this man made off of the backs of these kids. All the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast, and uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their um, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me, you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? So, you know, to me, that was sort of a red alert that 
<laughs> we really are creating a circumstance here that is not beneficial to the development of young people, which is why I always did what I did. Um, my dad did it. I did it. Um, so, and that's the reason that I always like college athletics more than the NFL is because yeah. you had the opportunity <laughs> to develop young people. So, and I, I want their quality of life to be good. I think, as I said before, name, image, and likeness is a great opportunity for them to create a brand for themselves. Um, I'm not against that at all. Um, but to come up with some kind of a system uh, that still can help the development of young people, I think, is paramount to the future of college athletics. Way to throw Miss Terry under the yeah. bus there. Yeah. Great tan, though. I mean. Well, he's probably been playing golf every day for the last two months. I mean, uh, you were howling with laughter. I'm assuming that's what the media's response is. The uh, I'm, I don't think I've been talking for a while about the idea of just greed, resplendent, unwavering greed, not just in sports, but everywhere, everywhere on the globe has been a rotting contaminant. But when it gets to the kids is when it's a problem. When it gets to college kids want to be paid for it, then all of a sudden Nick Saban is next to Ted Cruz, is and he's and he's comfortable going sort of the Tuberville, Tuberville, Tuberville route mm -hmm. of what can I do in my region of the country to get the people who I'm surrounded by who believe the college kids should be kept down because it gets in the way of the greater good of Alabama being the best. But he's not against NIL. Well, this isn't the first time that he's <laughs> said this. Remember when him and Jimbo Fisher got into it two summers ago when he was like, Texas A&M is buying all their players, and Jimbo Fisher got really upset and bristled at that. Like This has been, I think, his viewpoint for a while. And, and I would say probably a lot of people – I can't speak for the media reaction as a whole, but I think a lot of people do think that – there needs to be some regulation and restriction to NIL. The problem has always been how do you do that and how do you put a cap on athlete compensation for their name, image, and likeness and who regulates that and what is that when the coaches have un unfettered access to wealth and riches for coaching in the sport. That's always been the issue. What were you laughing at? I mean, oh, so many things. First of all, he was acting his ass off with his voice breaking there, like oh, the kids and oh, so that that made me laugh. But then I looked at Ted Cruz staring, gazing at him lovingly, and I just thought, how big is Ted Cruz's boner right now? Like, let's not play these black kids. Let's keep them <laughs> broke for life or whatever. And then the final, the coup de grace, like that's why I like college football more than the NFL because I couldn't tell them them naysayers what to do. They'll get paid. <laughs> These ones over here, I can tell them everything. I was like, come on, man. That whole thing was just hilarity. It's, it was, it, I, midway through it, I tried to imagine if this were like 1866 and this is like a former plantation uh, owner. Like, the we should have put him in a powdered wig. No, uh, no. Nick Saban should have been wearing a powdered wig. The Colonel Sanders suit. He should have been dressed like Don Johnson and Django, talking about like, <laughs> I just can't, I can't tell them what to do now. They, they, all they care about is getting paid. No shit, Sherlock. You got paid for 50 years. Well, also, <laughs> And you've been paying them players, for 10 years. <laughs> players went to Alabama so they could get paid in the NFL, so it's not like they didn't care about money beforehand. Plus, obviously, players were getting paid in a less, even less regulated way. And he also went on to talk about parity and, like, this will make the rich richer and the poor poorer. Like... I, I don't even I don't even know how to begin to unpack that when you've been the head coach at Alabama for like twenty years. Well, I'm Isn't about the to, you are the uh, no. Rich. I'm an, I'm going to do this for you right now. I'm going to unpack it for oh. you with the details that you might want on this. That's very nice of you. I'm, I have them all in front of me here because mm. uh, well, I shouldn't say all. I hate unpacking. I shouldn't say all. I like I don't, packing. Though. I don't have them don't all know. in front of me. <laughs> You like packing? I like packing. It's like, it's like anticipation. Like, here we go. We're right. going on when a trip. When you're packing, you're going somewhere, yeah. presumably fun. Yes. You know, maybe on vacation. Mm -hmm. But when What's you're unpacking, it's a hassle because you just want to get uh. to the fun. Right? Yeah. But when you right. are leaving, do you like packing again? No, right? No. It's mm. easier than packing the first time, though. Really? You just what? put all this stuff yeah. that you brought in your hotel room right. back. Do you separate around. your dirty clothes and your clean clothes? Of course. Clothes? Yes, always. How? With a laundry bag. Okay, no, that's doing? what I was asking. Oh, no, yeah, I put a way. demarcation. I put a right. T-shirt across oh, the line. Nice. that I'm like, this is Zipper the... pocket for me. If it works know. out, I do one half of the suitcase dirty, and then the stuff I didn't Yeah, the that's a good half. move. Nice. Hey, yeah, what were those saving cool. facts? We're getting to them. We'll get to Dirty stuff with the shoes, right? Two minutes. Get out of here. Don't show people that. Don't show people that. Don't get out. He's huffing and puffing over here. Two minutes. They're talking about laundry again. Get out. 
I'm huffing and puffing. You were huffing and puffing. I was hoping you'd do the next nine minutes and I could leave because you understood what we were doing here. I wanted nine minutes on packing. <laughs> I wanted nine straight minutes on packing. Instead, I've got you showing everybody what the joke is. Well, you know the good thing about unpacking, though? What? Is that you, can, you don't actually have to do it, like, well. Yeah. Like, I'm, hmm. I'm in a hotel right now to be here with you lovely folks. Thank you for that. Yeah. My absolute pleasure. <laughs> um, and all my stuff is not unpacked. It's just sort of like um, messier in my suitcase. Oh. What's the number of days that you go on a trip that you need to unpack? More than three. I can More push three. it. I'm with Chris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. three Wait, days or less? Yeah, you're, same. You're saying unpack and put everything away where it should yeah, be. Yeah, like, yeah. like you're in your room. Well, right? we went to the Super Bowl. I unpack. I unpack. And as well. I oh, yeah. Things. You have to. Yes. But like on a weekend trip, right. I won't. How many right. days before the trip do you start packing? I Dude, pack an hour and a half before yeah. I leave. Yeah. Wow. Day my, wow. My, my, wife, day my wife starts yeah. like four days before we leave. Mm. I my, like the idea of it. Mentally, I start doing that, but it's always yes, a game mentally. time decision. And then you're like trying to cram everything. You're sitting on it. Then you do like the extender thing on the bag. And then you have to push it down and close Sit the extender on the bag. thing. Yeah. My dog is afraid of suitcases. So I wait to put it in the suitcase until minutes before we yeah. leave. But I will start folding and organizing days before. I would argue I'm the best bag closer here. Huh. I would go toe to toe with you, Chris. Not, I believe that you believe that. I can when I get my knee on that thing, I'm closing this bag. Oh, it's game over. Oh wait, hold on. This is a different mm. game, though. Talking about a, su- a full suitcase that needs to be shut. Hard I'm case or You would be my go-to guy on this show. Yes, but you're not the most organized packer. That's no, no, what no, you're no, saying no, no. you're the one that can get the bag closed the best. I don't out of use packing here. cubes. No, me neither. Is <laughs> anyone? Is it? Any cube people here? No. I've dabbled with cubes, but yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure about them yet. Mm. Lucy's a big cube gal. Yeah. Yeah. Cubes, oh. cube, you know, packing is sort of like writing an article. Yeah. Because you, you get an outline in your head, you think about it for a while, you agonize, you put it off, you don't do it, then you start doing it, then you get distracted, then you realize you're about to miss your deadline or your flight, and then wow. packing cubes are the outline of suitcases. <laughs> do, right. I, do I have this wrong around you, Charlotte? Because I don't know you like this, but I would assume that, it, that you give off a little bit like your entire life is, I've got to pack 90 minutes before I'm going to wherever my next 90 minutes are going. Like You're always chasing sort of the bags in your life. Oh, he says yeah. you seem One, scattered. 100,000 yeah. percent. I don't know if I've ever been more accurately pegged than you're always chasing the bags in your life 90 minutes okay. before. But I will say I'm pretty good at hitting a deadline. I want to ask a number of different questions of the audience here. Is your dog afraid of your bag? Because I don't think Willow's afraid of your bag. I think Willow doesn't like it when you leave, and your bag represents that every time. Correct. They They'll, know. Yeah. Willow. They know. Willow does not yes. like when you leave the house, and that's the that she's got no fear of bags if she's allowed to be around the bags and go with the bags. But she doesn't know where those bags go. She knows mommy takes them with her, and then Willow's alone. She fears Severe that more than anything. Separation. Those bags. Yeah. Those bags connote leaving without me. Yeah. Some really good doggy psychology, Dan. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, yep. yes, I, I thank you. I'm an expert in this realm, uh, one of the few. <laughs> I also want to ask the question, though, do you like packing, yes or no? And I also want to ask the question, when do you like packing more, to go for the trip or to get back home? Because there seems to be some disagreement here. I'm happy that Amin is back. Uh, I do want to ask you guys a Are question. You? Uh, I mean, yes, because I do want yeah. him to be here this hour and help the show with not whispering and not revealing all That's of the innards of the show to everybody. Right. He gets it. But if you can put on, if, if you can someone look this up for me, because you mentioned uh, Don Johnson and Django, and I really do think like his last nine roles are just racist. Like he's <laughs> a, he's being sti- I think he's done like the the last. He, really? I think he was a, a he, he was uh, he was a Klansman in one of the, uh, Tarantino's other movies when they couldn't see anything because the pillowcases didn't work right. Um, but I'm pretty sure Don Johnson's like last five or six roles are. Wasn't he? What was that HBO? Uh, the the one season or two seasons? The Watchers. Uh, the Watchmen. It was the Watchmen. Watchmen right? Yes, the, the Watchmen. Watch. Wasn't he also a racist in the Watchmen? Yes, I believe so. Just he's just going I feel around. Like there's a lot of roles for you in Hollywood if that's what you're typecast <laughs> as. Oh yeah, very easy role to fill. It's a but, safe play, I guess. Did you know he was a powerboat racer? 
What? Whoa, what? Miami Whoa. Arena? Well, I don't know, Justin. Th- compare, uh, compared to, according to, that's how words work, his Wikipedia. In 1986, Johnson received his first motorsport victory. He won a 1,100, oh, not Miami, mile powerboat race up the Mississippi River. It was in Mississippi? It's close. So, so not donating to the Canes NIL fund. Hmm. And that's how we bring it back to college football, Dan. Ah, he was hey. in a movie called High Heat, and I missed it. I mean, <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> put it on Looks the great. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Can you believe that Stugatz missed the movie <laughs> High Heat? Uh, so here are some facts for you on Nick Saban. Okay, on, and look on. this. Hold on. High Heat synopsis: Ray and Anna, husband and wife, own and operate a restaurant together on their opening night. Both of them are keeping secrets, however. Ray is in debt to the mafia. And Anna is an ex-KGB agent. Right. Both what? secrets are revealed when the mafia sends people to kill Ray, but Anna fights them off. Ray and Anna must work together to save their restaurant and their lives. <laughs> How'd I miss it? I mean, seriously. Sounds like Frozen 3. What year was this? 2022. What? 2022. Oh, I thought I you were going to say this. 1987. And Liam Neeson's not in this? No. <laughs> There's been a big movement in Hollywood lately to have like the the woman lead role be like secret agent or former secret agent that then goes in and saves the world. It's called inclusiveness, I think. That's I don't think inclusion. Is it? I don't think it's Is that. It? Well said. Is it? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> to say that confidently, that poorly, is the Amin experience first hour when he's just off the flight and he's tired. This happens every time he lands. He thinks he's just going to get on the treadmill at 100 miles an hour, and he's just a little slow and whispering, and then he gets mad at me for pointing it out. These numbers, though, Stugatz, on Nick Saban, mm-hmm. because maybe none of these are surprising to you. This is just what's known. I would like for you guys to look up for me. Uh, what the second highest paid employee, state employee in Alabama has been over the last 20 years, because he made $124 million in contracts at just Alabama, and Stugatz was probably underpaid. Yep. He had a country club membership paid for by the university, so that's taxpayers. He's got two full-sized cars for business and personal use, and no one knows whether those were part of the Ferrari collection he would show to recruits, but he would show a Ferrari collection to recruits. I don't, uh, I don't imagine Nick Saban uh, with Ferraris, but maybe, that, maybe you did. Uh, he has 24 hours a year on non-commercial airlines, so anytime he wants a private plane, basically, he can do it. His salary the last season was $11.4 million, and I'm guessing there's no college coach who made more in endorsements. It's estimated... At five million dollars, he'd get seventy-five grand for appearing in the SEC championship game. One hundred twenty-five grand if he won it. He'd get sixty-five grand for appearing in any bowl game, any bowl game at all. Hmm. Uh, he bought a mansion recently on Juniper Island for seventeen point five million dollars. Uh, the five million dollars in endorsements is a guess, but it's got to be more than any other college coach of any kind. And in two thousand and thirteen. Ten years ago, and we don't know how many more of these arrangements there are, right? Because guys like this get paid two hundred thousand dollars for showing up and making a corporate speech, just talking, just shaking hands with your CEO for thirty minutes. He gets a quarter million dollars at least. The Crimson Tide Foundation was started, a private foundation set up to help fund athletics at Alabama. They spent three point one million dollars to just buy Saban's four bedroom, four and a half bathroom home. And he continued to live in it. So they just bought his house as well. <laughs> and there, nobody had this deal. And then there's this one. This one's good, too. And, by the way, deserved, earned for the CEO of this business. His contract called for him at the University of my, uh, Alabama to meet each February to calculate the average salaries of both the three highest paid head coaches in the SEC and the five highest paid coaches nationally. If Saban's total salary was lower than either of those two averages, his pay would rise to match the higher one. So uh, inflation was not going to like cause Nick Saban to ever be like Jared Goff was, where he was the highest paid. No, Nick Saban's always the highest paid according to whatever you're paying people at that rate like what's the what's the other argument on the other side of this and that's why i like college more than the nfl mahomes should take notes from that instead of cutting salary i'm just saying like he should be doing that for all the quarterbacks in the league (laughs) with the chiefs but but this and and then he leaves and steve uh, sarkeesian gets the same sort of deal at texas well he he had leverage i mean
I need for you, Chris Cody, please, before the end of the show, to just find for me the way that I stumbled through the names uh, of Sarkeesian and Tuberville because Stugatz, as soon as the microphones <laughs> went off, says to me, howling, that's why I call him Sark, Dan. <laughs> It's easier, man. <laughs> and then, uh, That's ne- why everyone calls him sorry. Ne- never has he looked so wise to me. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm drowning in my vulnerabilities. And he's like, yes, he's got the obvious second guess as we go right off the air. Um, Amin also, uh, he, he had the closing line for the last segment because he does not want to leave this Aaron Rodgers topic alone. He's got his cabinet filled out already. Nice. And, uh, and I do want to talk about this a little more because if we're going to go full-blown crazy as a country, let's go ahead and do it. Let's have it, like, saturate sports as well. Remember when we said politics are not going to infiltrate sports? We're going to stick to sports. We're going uh, to keep them separate and apart, and we're going to do this by ending racism in the end zone and moving on with our lives. And then the, the walls cave in, and now the Jets quarterback is being mentioned with Jesse Ventura. With Jesse Ventura. But why my team? Why the Jets? Like, infiltrate somewhere else, because, not the Jets. Because the strain, the viral strain of crazy that is all over America will right. infect at least one of the teams, and it just happened to be the most cursed of them. I'll tell you this. If he runs on a platform with RFK that he will make the Jets better, he'll make the Jets good again, I will vote for Aaron Rodgers. Oh, How about Stu. that? Oh. You, know, you know what's crazy? <laughs> That's how desperate I am. <laughs> I 40 years! We keep talking about politics entering sports. Nobody had on their bingo card sports entering politics. That's right. The best defense is a counterattack, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to infiltrate Washington, D.C. We're going to put Patrick Ewing in the White House. We're going to put... that didn't work no. at Georgetown. No, it didn't. That didn't. That was, yeah. That's a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, Patrick like, what, going to D.C. Why did you just do that? What, I don't what, know. What, you just led an insurrection, and I we know. fell down at the gates. Yeah. Like what? I can't be a leader, Dan. Like, what just That's... happened? You were trying to get a mob. I going. was waiting for someone to be like, yeah. yeah but, it, but Patrick Ewing failed miserably as the coach of Georgetown. I should have started with Aaron Rodgers. I don't know why I went away from it. It's called inclusiveness. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what it <laughs> is. Um, Jamel Hill's going to join us here in a second. Uh, but uh, the, the naivete, because uh, we have clips to undermine our particular echo chamber, okay? Because Pablo Torre started his podcast, which now has a pretty giant following because he caught on to something and people re- uh, really like the weirdness of what he's doing. Uh, Pablo Torre uh, can go all woke and liberal on you, but hmm. never forget that he was wearing a whale costume the first time Jesse Ventura appeared on us on ESPN, and we just entertained conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory, smiling, and again, with Pablo Torre dressed as an orca. You know, I got in all sorts of trouble when I questioned 9-11. Well, I've been vindicated because in the chapter, the new chapter of the book, um, the 9-11 report has 28 redacted pages that we're not allowed to see that George Bush redacted them. Well, Congressman Cook and Senator Graham were on the intelligence. I'm not lobbing it out there. It's what's in the 9-11 report that they won't let us see. There's 28 redacted pages. The grid, they've both told me. All it deals with is... I are both kind of just shocked and, and mortified. Pablo's dressed like an orca. Jesse Ventura with us. That is great. <laughs> That's cinema. That was his profile picture for the longest yes. time. Him as an yes. orca with his fins on his face in shock. Uh, forgive me again. Uh, forgive me, audio audience. I promise you this, is, this particular thing is better enjoyed visually. I wish to play again, please. The sheer horror Pablo beginning his career at ESPN, I believe, is looking into the cameras scared, dressed as an orca because of the words being said just freely years ago. We were ahead of the curve. We were talking politics before anybody at ESPN. You know, I got in all sorts of trouble when I questioned 9-11. Well, I've been vindicated (laughs) because in the chapter, the new chapter in the book, 
um, the 9-11 report has 28 redacted pages that we're not allowed to see, that George Bush redacted them. Well, Congressman Cook and Senator Graham were on the intelligence. I'm not lobbing it out there. It's what's in the 9-11 report that they won't let us see. There's 28 redacted pages. The grid, they've both told me. All it deals with is... I are both kind of just shocked and, and mortified. Pablo's dressed like an orca. Jesse even... <laughs> the best part is that initial, you know how you're in an interview and the, the interview subjects is talking half about listening. whatever. You're half listening. You're trying to think of what your next question is. Maybe you're looking up, you know, your, your fantasy team or whatever. And then you hear something that just snaps you out of that funk. Like, wait, what did he say? And the way he looks up and then looks back at Mike and then looks back at the camera. <laughs> you know, you know, it's weird, though, is that that was my onboarding for Metal Arc. They made me listen to that clip wearing an orca costume. Yeah. So How'd you do? phenomenal <laughs> billy uh the only other time i remember seeing a face quite that horrified on our air was uh the day that i was getting suspended that the director just cut to you in the penalty box as our executive producer for and the i couldn't day. hear anything yeah, yeah. and you classic shot you, know, you knew but you knew the day before i left for my bachelor trip <laughs> Fun time. Uh, video, can you find that, please? I believe it's the single greatest video produced in the history of our broadcasts. I believe, uh, it, I will remind people, I don't know if they're going to be able to find it before the end of the segment, Stugatz, but uh, you have to find a specific clip that begins with Billy staring all over the place confused because a director had purposely taken the camera off of me because I was talking about Trump, and they said, if we just put it on this producer in a colorful penalty box, <laughs> surely no news outlet will run it this way. Even though the audio is still running. Yeah, correct. That's I was, also right. not yes. how it played so, out. But not a, not unlike Jesse Ventura talking about 9-11, I don't know what the audio will be uh, specifically, <laughs> but comedically I think it'll work perfectly with the video of a scared Billy looking around in charge and unable to hear what is happening as the director is saying, take the camera off of him. Just trying to get to my wedding day a week away. <laughs> scared Billy. Oh. I'm, all right, we'll get that. He's and we'll, always scared. How about to say? <laughs> no, but this, 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 Billy, you don't think this video is funny? Because I think it's the funniest thing, the funniest video we've ever made. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we. Are, I'm overselling. Then, if we do find it, we'll 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 put it in front of the group, and we'll have you guys vote. Uh, Roy, do you have a thought on this matter? It was the funniest thing that I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever? <laughs> yeah. One of. I mean, it's very high on the list. A, a confused Billy wandering around, not able to hear, looking like he's very scared of I what I'm saying. I couldn't hear, but I, I had a feeling what was coming. I, I knew. Ish. Oh, boy. There's my face. Chris found it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, uh, all right. So. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, is the shirt. funniest thing. You're right. yeah, that shirt really <laughs> tells the story. Okay, this is Billy in charge. He's supposed to have an IFB in, but I've sent him into the penalty box. And you know, I am now getting suspended for talking about Trump, saying you can't be in front of a chanting crowd, saying send her back. And da and as you said, Billy can't hear your audio, but you can. T he knows what's happening. Like he knows that. I knew what was coming something. after. I knew trouble was headed our way. <laughs> and I knew I just needed to get on a plane the next day. And that's all I was hoping would happen. <laughs> I've aged. <laughs> Talk to your younger self, Billy. Billy, I want to tell you it's going to be all right. But I'm still not sure. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't think so. I don't <laughs> Uh, someone needs to do something. He spread it. All right. Get the audio accompaniment and see if it's even funnier than that. Stugatz, I don't know how you feel exactly. Uh, I don't know how Jessica feels about the intoxicant of football flooding back into your life yesterday with the transaction. But it really is amazing that it really is that football would be such an addiction at this point that their basic admin day. Like where they're just like shuffling paperwork all around the league right. is like a day of national celebration for us because we're like, yes, everybody's moving teams. And look, they're all one-year contracts now. 
I know we've kind of done this before, but imagine like if we didn't announce all these things and like just f- week one, you just see Kirk Cousins emerging from the Atlanta. That was my room. idea last and week. That's yes. what I'm saying. Right. It's just it. Yes. I know it's so much fun this time, but imagine the excitement of week one if we didn't know all these moves. Like if the Ravens, they have no idea who their new running back is, and it's revealed opening day, it's Derrick Henry. Oh, my God. That would be great. Chris, that's a central argument that I have against like the importance of newsbreakers. And do they actually break news, or do they just tell us things that we're going to find out anyway? Like, one way or another, we're going to find out Derrick Henry's a Baltimore Raven. I didn't need Adam Schefter to tell me that. But a team press release is, I'd rather just have it from Adam. If it's going to be the run out of the tunnel week one, then I'm fine not knowing it. But if it's right. just going to be a team release, I'm cool knowing it with the reporters. Yeah. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Can- counterpoint, I think that nor- like normal companies, instead of the NFL doing things what normal companies do, which is just like not announce everything all the time because nobody cares. Normal companies should start having like press conferences and TV yeah. shows to be like, our new chief technology officer <laughs> coming out of the tunnel <laughs> is <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> when, when I say yesterday was, an, I mean... An, the an, last two days, really. No, uh, okay, all yes. right, just whatever. Right. Let's make it three days, three... I wish it was longer. Three <laughs> glorious administrative days. Three work-from-home days for the NFL. Would you agree with me on we should just start making these three days what the draft is, where just agents are coming out and confetti cannons all over the place just all day, <laughs> farting football content into the sky? Like, just here's your football. We're going to steal these three days, too, at the beginning of March. Yes. Charlotte's idea is it sounds good in theory, but it, it becomes sad and people are going to get upset when it's this new head of customer service, a three year deal for 150K. Like, no, I'm just saying because like wow. across three job. years, and then it's pr- it's actually heavier on the back end. But then they cut them before team option, right. non guaranteed deal. Is their vacation yeah. getting paid out? Is that in the press uh, release? Absolutely not. That, his agent, his, the agent, has to come out and say he. By the way, he got like four months of PTO <laughs> over the lifetime of the deal. <laughs> Just keep giving contracts, little, stats, little, little stats. <laughs> Think of the news my football team got over the last three days. <laughs> Everyone else is celebrating. My quarterback wants to be the vice president. Yeah, I'd rather have <laughs> Russell Wilson. <laughs> Adrian would work time. himself into a frenzy.
Stugatz, why are you and Jessica laughing? What uh, can that come on air? Or are you just doing uh, you just doing show for yourselves there? It was a, a, one of the worst jokes Stugatz has ever made. We were thinking of athletes who connote the monarchy because offline we were talking about this whole Kate Middleton thing, which we'll get to later. And I was like, ah, oh, Patrick Queen, Prince Fielder, and Stugatz said. Harry Carey. <laughs> oh, Harry Carey. Wow. That's a good oh. one. I gave you Tayshawn Prince as well. I mean, um, Duke okay. Johnson, by the way. Not bad. Uh, that is a bad. It, you need to work on your Harry Carey. Oh, come on. Yeah, it, 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 better? It, uh, yeah, a little better. I gotta but find it. It's rusty. No, it's rusty. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Keep practicing. Keep practicing, and maybe by the end of the segment, you will have it uh, so that we can do this correctly. Uh, Jamel Hill is with us. We are uh, we are forming the cabinet, trying to form the cabinet, whether it's Jesse Ventura or Aaron Rodgers for a new presidential run, better than the options that we're uh, given, Jamel. And uh, I like I want to laugh at this, and, but I also I I don't want to be too flippant about. Um, I mean, is it all jokes, or is is there is there stuff here that uh, that I should fear, just generally fear? Well, here's the thing: the reason why you feel uncomfortable laughing is because you're looking at what our political world looks like right now, and it would be amusing if it weren't also terrifying, and if it weren't also meaning that we were picking you know, arguably the most important leader in the world. When you look at all the things that have happened, I mean, we have a presidential candidate who's running, who has, who is facing 91 indictments, who owes so much money because of, uh, you know, liable uh, uh, rape allegations because of what he owes, you know, the state of New York. I mean, like, there's just, there's so much there that you now look at the possibility of Aaron Rodgers being a vice, a serious vice presidential candidate and say to yourself, well, it's not the weirdest thing that we've seen because look at our, our current politics. So there are some jokes to be made, but there's also a part, I think running through everybody's mind is saying like, okay, this is jacked up, but I could actually see it happening. Maybe not in the winning, but like this seriously becoming a campaign. Uh, Jamel, I would say that one of the great jokes of the cosmos is the idea that your last eight years dedicated to journalism, like, uh, blew off sideways because you said the tamest of things that now has been like mushroom. That, I mean, that is mushroom clouded into like, I just said this one little thing of like, this is white supremacy here. And now it's mushroomed into 91 felonies and, and like... It's kind of amazing how uh, how tame your controversy uh, is now, given that it was just a few years ago and it seemed like a big deal at the time. Yeah, oh, if anything, I, you could say I took it easy. I mean, really. I mean, calling him a white supremacist is the least of the troubling things that we have come <laughs> to later discover about uh, about Donald Trump. But, you know, unfortunately, the, the unfortunate part of his presidency, and there are many unfortunate parts, but one of them is that now I think people, a lot of people feel like they can do the job, that they deserve to be in political office because he won. And because now he's considered a, you know, he's obviously the GOP front runner. If you're Aaron Rodgers, regardless of the numerous idiotic things that you said, why would you think you don't have a chance at this? Our political cycle literally proves you have a great shot at perhaps becoming the vice president simply because of your name, simply because he has a legion of people who do not mind his bullshit. So here you go. Congratulations there, Rogers. <laughs> Jamel explaining her controversy now is like me trying to explain why 2007 NBA All-Star Game was so crazy because people were smoking weed out in public. So you say it and people are like, <laughs> and? No, you don't get it. Back then that was crazy. Now it's like, yeah, so you just... <laughs> Just another day. Or just huh? the idea in general, I mean, of of, of sports being in Vegas, right? Like yeah. major legitimate sports happening, you know, not <laughs> boxing, not what we normally see. They're like, there was an NBA All-Star game there, and uh, people thought that was, like, quite controversial. It's like, really? They have, like, every team now. Like, I don't, I don't even understand this. So, yeah, some things uh, practically, uh, I guess, in the reverse don't age well. <laughs> 
Let's uh, play for Jamel here. Speaking of everyone can run for president now because I saw that The Rock was making fun of Ronaldo because Ronaldo buys his followers and The Rock has, like, people think The Rock could be president because he's popular enough. And so here's Steph Curry not ruling it out. Listen to this. Do you have an interest in politics? I, I have an interest in leveraging every part of my influence for for good in the way that I can. So... If that's the way to do it, then I'm not saying the presidency, but if, well, if, wait, that, if the May, politics, that's May, maybe, but maybe. I'm saying if politics is a way that you can create meaningful change or if there's another way outside of politics, you know, that we can do. You're not ruling it out. No. 2028, you never <laughs> not know. Not that soon. Not that soon, okay. <laughs> okay, that, he's not going to do that. He'd win. Sure. I mean, I mean that, not ruling it sure. out. He's just giving a televised answer. Like, I could have said definitely not. Like, no, man, I could Yeah, like, the, the option is it's me to say no, man. You could be like, politics, that's absurd. But he sort of entertained it. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to play back Dan saying he's not going to do that when oh, Steph Curry's running for president. President Curry. Oh, my God. He literally hit her with a, you never know. <laughs> what do you mean? Didn't you, you guys didn't hear that the same way where he, no. Steph Curry seems, uh, uh, it, it, he is publicly public light and so he wants to do good but not president you think steph curry is going to be like a cabinet member draymond green secretary of defense yeah no. <laughs> yep oh, easy call it. easy call mm-hmm. no one will mess with us <laughs> imagine if steph was just like what a stupid question let's move on <laughs> he's never gonna say that steph can't say that see that right. would be him denying it right. if he's yeah. just like that's absurd that's one of the dumbest things i've ever heard but he's just like no 20 is too early Uh, Jamel, what do you make of the normalization of scandal, the uh, the idea that everyone now thinks they can be president and all you have to do is have your audience? Dan, this is just a continuation of what we're already seeing in other sectors of uh, of our society. Right. A lot of people now think they could be journalists just because of social media. and They've been able to step into that lane. Uh, you know, you see probably on these red carpets now, we just had the Oscars, you probably see more, um, way more influencers than you do, you know, people who are legitimate uh, entertainment r- reporters. I mean, social media and the the ability to captivate and have and maintain an audience has become the premium factor to how we're deciding things. You know, again, using Hollywood as an example, Um, There are people, uh, you know, and actors talk about these things both privately and some are brave enough to say say it publicly, is that there are studios that would rather put an influencer in certain roles in movies and TV shows because they know that they can attract an audience. They don't care if they're trained. They don't care if they have the chops to actually act for longer than 30 second clips. That person brings an audience to the table and therefore that legitimizes them. And so, yes, we are in a time where the idea of picking a quarterback, a quarterback, by the way, who at some point lectured to everybody about how that he didn't want any distractions and how the Jets and everything should be all about business and all about football. And now we see behind closed doors, he, he's been having talks about, you know, one of the most important positions that you can hold in this country. But I, I just think we're at a point in society where if you can capture and have an audience, You can practically be considered for anything. Jamel, on to more important things. On your Instagram account, you and your husband told a story about going to a restaurant. Your husband came out and the valet said, wow, what do you do for a living? Because your husband was dressed real nice and a nice car pulled up or whatever. And you guys had a disagreement on whether this was a compliment (laughs) or whether this was, in fact, like, kind of like, oh, what do you do? So did you get to the bottom of it? I know you opened it up to your followers to answer and leave comments. Did you get to the bottom of whether this was, in fact, a compliment or not? Okay, well, I guess before I give the the answer and the context, I mean, do I get the neighborhood race lady music? Yeah, hold on a second. Hold on a second. 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 Chris Cody, good work. (laughs) Uh, Good work, as always. Uh, It's time for... Your friendly neighborhood race lady. You're good. <laughs> Thank you for producing our producer. He seemed to be texting somebody at the time. <laughs> what was the question? So, here, so here's the situation of what happened. My husband and I, we, we had a little date night last uh, last week. We went to this very wonderful restaurant called The Linden here in Los Angeles and had a great time. We're coming out to leave the restaurant. And uh, my husband is a little bit ahead of me because I think I might have gone to the bathroom. So I came out a little later. 
And uh, in the car, he explained to me that as soon as he handed the valet the valet ticket, uh, and his car was parked right outside, um, he said, "Is that your car?" And my husband said, "Of course, yes, that's my that's my car." And I, and he's like, uh, then he asked him, um, you know, what did he do to get a car, you know, basically like that. And um, uh, I was coming out, I guess, right after he asked him this. And I just heard my husband say, get you a good woman in your life. <laughs> and um, cause he, I think that ballet also said any advice as well. He's like, you know, what did you do to get a car like that? Any advice? And he said, get you, get you a good woman in, the, in your life. Now, I threw this out as a debate on social media, on Instagram, on my Instagram account, because, you know, when you're Black and you're in certain spaces or you have certain things, a lot of people look at you. Like, how did you get in this room? Or how did you get that? Like, something isn't adding up. This doesn't fit the picture of how I thought Black success would be, if you even thought Black success was attainable. And so I kind of took offense to him asking. My husband was like, no, I think he meant it genuinely. And so I put it out there for people to, you know, debate and give me their thoughts and perspective. The number one question that was asked what was the ethnicity of the person who asked this? <laughs> that was number one, okay? And so I will tell everyone who either has gone to my Instagram or will go now after this conversation, the person, the valet who asked was Latino. So I don't know how that impacts how people think about the situation, uh, but I just know that there is to me a fine line between genuine, uh, legitimate curiosity and then on top of that, or between genuine, uh, genuine, legitimate curiosity, and then kind of being a little too intrusive and perhaps a question like this coming off, uh, you know, the wrong way. Because like, this has happened to me so many times where people are like, well, how'd you, how'd you do that? Like, how are you in first class? Or what do you do for a living? And I really hate that. And especially for my husband, who is often confused for a professional athlete. And one time somebody <laughs> was so, it's true. He loves it's like, it they're like, so he's checking all the boxes. It's like, you know, black dude, nice car, good physique. They're like, surely he plays for the Ravens. It's like, no, he's in medical devices. What can I tell you? <laughs> Sorry, it's not more glamorous than that. But, you know, he, of course, like I mean, said, like, he's like, I got a nice body and I'm glad they confused me. But I'm like, no, babe, you have to see the racism in this. Why do you got to be a professional athlete? Why can't you own a dry cleaner? Uh, like, why, why do you have to... You know, why does some ball sport have <laughs> to be goodbye, involved? Goodbye, goodbye, oh, race you know, lady. Friendly, yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is what it's like being married to me. <laughs> <laughs>